What About Vietnam? A podcast with Gary Newsom. The series where Gary talks with travellers about their experiences and adventures. Find out more about Vietnam from the people who have actually been there. What about Vietnam? Whether it's adventure, exploring the culture and cuisine, shopping, or just soaking up the sun. Let Carrie and her travellers pave the way for a magical holiday in Vietnam. What about Vietnam? Hello and welcome to What About Vietnam. My name is Kerry Newsom and I'm your host. This is the fun series. This is the series that I'm truly excited about because it's where I get a chance to interview travellers and talk about their holidays and their experiences in Vietnam. The way I see it, the best way to find out about Vietnam is actually from the travellers who've been there. Today's episode will focus on just one aspect of a visit to Vietnam and it's one of my favourite things to do as part of a trip and that's shopping. And there's no better person that I know to talk to about this subject than my guest today, Judith Trainer. And while Judith is a friend of mine and I have been fortunate to join her on some of her shopping safaris, allow me to introduce this lovely lady properly. Judith Trainer is the founder of Temples and Markets, an online curated store for ethically sourced gifts from Southeast Asia, a region Judith tells me she fell in love with about 20 years ago. In the store, Judith tells the story behind the products she sells and the people who make them. It's the store where every product has a story and every product is as unique as the person who actually handcrafted it. Judith also heads up the Pop-Up Collective, a movement of business owners aiming to reignite Australian retail through collaborative pop-ups and curated marketplaces. Judith has been named as female leader by Australian gender equality organisation, the Femme Economy, and she was a finalist for the online retailer's Best in Store initiative category for 2019. Let's just say Judith is recognised as a spokesperson for ethical shopping movement in Australia. I could go on and on about Judith's credits, but truly we'd be here all day. Judith tells me she first visited Vietnam over 10 years ago on a family top to bottom tour. That kind of set the pace for her, she says, and made her hungry to return and see more of the country and just delve a little bit deeper into the food and the shopping culture. Consequently, she visits Vietnam frequently as a tourist and shopper for her online store. In short, Judith is very well connected in Vietnam with artisans, designers and business entrepreneurs across the country. Definitely the girl you want to shop with, but take it from me, you better bring your credit card because you're going to do some serious damage. Hello, Judith, and welcome to What About Vietnam? This is where we get to talk about shopping in Vietnam. Yay! Hi, Kerry. <laughs> I can't wait to talk about shopping in Vietnam. Let's go. And Fantastic. I've been really looking forward to this episode as we get to, I don't know, pick your brains, delve into that bucket of knowledge you have about Vietnamese designers and, I don't know, just the general shopping experience. You certainly opened my eyes to Vietnam uh, last time in shopping. Um, So how about we kick things off with talking about a new traveller to Vietnam. If you were to steer them to uh, a destination in Vietnam or destinations, where would you start? Well, Kerry, you're going to be a bit surprised to hear me say this, but the first place I would oh, no. start um, would be to check out the souvenir shops and resort shops all over the country. That way you'll get a feel for the ubiquitous takeaways from Vietnam, you know, the conical hat that we almost take home, one conical hat, um, silk runners, cushion covers, uh, lacquered art, basketware. These are the things you will find all over Vietnam and you really do need to, you know, pop into souvenir shops and see what's around. And once you've done that, then we can delve a bit deeper. And this is what I really want to talk about, where to from there. Um, So the three major shopping cities, of course, are Hanoi, Saigon and Hoi An. And in all those three cities, what you're going to want to do is literally just walk around and explore because there's so so many hidden gems um, that you're only going to discover by walking, walking, walking. In Hanoi... You could spend a couple of days just browsing the boutiques and gift shops that line the long streets of the French Quarter. 
it's uh, excuse my pronunciations, but uh, Hangai, Nakhong, <laughs> and Hangdao. <laughs> um, they, 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 you'll find them on the map. Um, but look, they're all um, roads a very short distance from Hoangkiam Lake and the cathedral, which are basically where all the, the main hotels are located. Um, There's so some just, cute just, ones. Yeah. Isn't there? Like with, right. with like funny names as well as like, what was that women's one? was called uh, Women Power or something or? Oh, uh, girl, yeah, Ladies Rock. La- women Rock. Ladies Rock. Women, That's women Rock. right. Women yeah. Rock. That was fantastic. They? <laughs> we yeah. loved that, didn't we? Yeah. Um, so that's Hanoi um, in the centre. If you're staying in Saigon's District 1, um, it's almost compulsory to visit the massive Ventan Market um, oh. as a first stop, I guess. Um, it really is an important symbol of the city. Um, and it, it's just vast. You'll find, you know, hundreds of storeholders, amazing food. Um, there's a pop in there. Um, bit of a tip, do take some water because it can get super hot. In and it is a little bit claustrophobic, let's face yeah, it. Yeah, and it can be a bit daunting. But, you know, do include it on, on a first trip. Um, yeah, just, say, cool. just say you can be in there. You've been there. Um, so, um, but just a short walk. What I really want to talk about, I guess, is a short walk from um, Bentan and from the centres. Um, you've again similar to Hanoi, but in Saigon as well. You've got hidden gem boutiques and gift stores that you can just find by wandering along um, Dong Khoi, which is where a lot of the hotels are based, and um, near the famous Walking Street as well. Remember, we found that um, uh, regenerated building uh, that you walk in, you have no idea what you're going to find, and you um, walk up yeah. just steps and steps and just little um, local designer boutiques and cafes that you'd never know existed. You just got to wander. Yeah. And sometimes time. those, as you say, are quite hard to find. They're kind of hidden. Yeah. They're very small doorways. And, like, I would have walked right past that. I would not have seen that. And then all of a sudden you've said, no, whoop, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. this is where we're going. And all of a sudden we're up those stairs and I'm going, wow, there's just this, you know, amazing store with this amazing stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you can suddenly lose a few hours of your day. So. <laughs> Oh, hours. <laughs> add some days in. I think what we've got to give as a tip, um, add some extra days in for shopping on your trip because um, it might not be something you do think about when you're going to Vietnam. But seriously, it's a shopping paradise as um, we're going to get into. So one of my favourite streets, streets in the centre of Saigon is La Loi, um, which is just across, it's quite a major road on the other side of Bentan Market. Um, in one short stretch of road, you'll find Ipanema Bags, Ginkgo, Luzine, Dewey Tan and Mekong Plus. Now, these are all shops selling locally handmade, ethical and um, fashion, homewares and gifts. And that's something else we're going to talk about as we go on. But, um, you know, it, it, there's a big emphasis on these locally handmade and ethical, um, uh, lo- uh, wonderful creations all over Vietnam. Um, so that's, I guess, those are the tips if you've got a short time in the country but if you've got time just to delve a little bit deeper um so uh, just uh stick with me <laughs> um to discover the best of vietnam shopping i think you'll need to venture a short taxi distance away from the center of each city so um in hanoi grab a taxi go to um Taiho lake which is also known as Westlake. Um, or if you're in Saigon, head to District 2. Now, interestingly enough, these are both areas where the expats shop and live, and it's where you'll find the best representation of Vietnamese artisan-made fashion and homewares. Yeah, it's um, kind of the areas where I think um, they're not they're not the mainstream. If you if you just a you know you've just arrived into Vietnam, got off the plane, you, you know in Ho Chi Minh City in particular, you just, you're smack bang kind of into District 1, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. And uh, so to go to District 2 or those other areas, you've got to think a bit bit uh, wider, but, you know, also get some tips like we're talking about now um, about going to those districts and, and what to look for because, wow, I, I was just blown away. That's it. Um, and I think... Vietnamese are, I mean, they're really known for artisan crafts and the way they use traditional methods to create modern designs. I think first timers might be surprised to know there really is a flourishing fashion scene in Vietnam and they even have their own um, annual fashion show each year featuring local designers. So if you have got extra time, maybe an extra day, go and find that out. Okay. So, um, I mean, when I talk to travellers, 
you know, their first thoughts are, you know, oh, it's going to be cheap. Uh, they want to get tailoring done. They want to, you know, they definitely want to head off to the markets. But as you say, or we just started to touch on, uh, there is definitely a designer aspect uh, to shopping now in Vietnam. It has kind of uh, morphed a bit more, I think. So tell us a little bit more uh, about that as far as, you know, actual products that travellers should be seeking out uh, rather than you just, you know, the cheap, cheap stuff. But I mean, I, I go for the tailoring. No, no. That's all right. Sorry, Karen, Karen. You and you're going back and saying, yeah, I, I, okay. So I'm definitely into the tailoring, but there's more than just the tailoring. There is, oh, Kerry. And, and we're going to get to that. But, you know, Kerry, what I'm going to say, <laughs> I know you love the tailoring. And you know what I'm going to say? I'm a big fan of the tailoring too, and particularly in Hoi An. Um, look, everyone has their favourite tailor that they can recommend, and let's not underestimate the sheer joy of having a design you've seen in a magazine oh. being made to measure for you at an affordable Beautiful. price within oh. a couple of days. So here's our, a tip. Um, if you're going to Hoi An, you do need a few, more, a few days in your itinerary because you're going to need to go to the tailor pick your designs and then have enough time to go back for your fittings and then um exactly you know, grab grab your goodies um you do need extra time and i do recommend that for travelers to add a couple of days for that yes and you know the other thing we have to think about though totally concur if, if you are having something made up um by taylor on holidays please think about it is it something you're going to wear when you get home <laughs> it's just a tip we've all done it we've all gone on holiday and thought that looks great it's really hot, so it's it's a beautiful, cool fabric. You get home, you go, oh, what was I thinking? So, you know, yes. <laughs> take some time. Don't rush into it. Um, just a little tip there. But um, can we go on from Taylor's just to talk about something else in Hoi An as well? Um, yes. You love the Taylor's. What do I love? I love the shoemakers. Uh, you little... do love the shoes. <laughs> the, oh, the shoes you picked. Oh, okay, yes, no. So, go for so, it. But, have to talk about yes, shoes. Shoemakers like me. Um, a shoe, no shoemakers like me I'd love to be a shoemaker shoe lovers like me um uh, oh yeah oh yeah it's got about as many um shoemakers as it does tailors um and the reason being is um anyone knows about Hoi An, it's the center of artisans um craftspeople and artists it has been for hundreds of years that's what's attracted people to it so um it's, uh, these shoemakers and leather shops all, um, dotted all over Hoi An Here's my top, top tip. If you take away one thing from this, <laughs> this conversation today, um, if you've got a pair of shoes or boots that you love and you can't imagine that, you know, ever not having them and they're on their way out because you've overworn them, mm -hmm. take them with you, take them with you, put them in your bag, put them in your suitcase and you can get them copied. Um, should we be encouraging coffee? I'm not sure. But anyway, we're going to say it. Um, <laughs> get them cockied. Um, you can even have them made in other colours. Right now, it is winter yes. in Sydney and it's not my favourite season, but I have a pair of <laughs> knee-high boots I originally bought in cream that I've had made up in blue and grey and I wear them all through winter and I get lots of comments. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> when I had, you know, people go, where would you get that? And I say, they're my Hoi An boots. So <laughs> that's a just, <laughs> you know, Take your favourite boots and shoes and get them copied. Um, that thing is jewellery. While we're talking about the shoemakers and the tailors, oh. jewellery makers in Hoi An, um, oh. quick tip. If you, I'm okay. feeling the pain already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. So, again, find, some, some, find a design that you love or maybe something that you've had that's broken or you've lost and you can have jewellery made up. Or remodeled. You want remodeled, yes. <laughs> exactly. I've, I've had some remodeling. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yep. And, again, look, fraction of the price of what it would cost, even if you could find someone to do it at home. Yes, because um, their labour cost is so low. You're right. But I know you want me to talk more about <laughs> Um, the designer and ethical side um, to shopping in Vietnam and that's what I really want to go into now. So um, there is so much in the way of distinctly Vietnamese fashion gifts and homewares um, that I really want everyone to seek out if you have the time. What struck me first on my very first visit to Vietnam years ago was just the abundance of colour, sheer colour. Designers and artisans are really not afraid to use colour in homewares and fashion. Um, and there's also this pride in their history and culture 
um, that really comes through when you go to the shops. It comes through in designs of cushion covers that might have lanterns or the um, beautiful Art Deco tiles that you see all over the place that, you know, they're on cushion covers or tote bags. And also you see women in the traditional hours eye represented on so much art and uh, and bags and cushions. Um, so where would you go to find those kind of things? I'd say if you're on a whistle stop tour of Vietnam, of the city, sorry, of Vietnam, Saigon, Hanoi, look out for the concept stores. Um, yeah. where offer a sort of a capsule collection of local creations. One Judith, is to- can, oh, yeah, sorry. can I just jump in on concept stores just to explain to our listeners just, you know, what is a concept store just to explain that? Sure. So it's a, almost like a capsule collection um, of something in, in a store that might have little sections of homewares um, and fashion accessories and gifts. It's like almost like a mini department store that's showcasing oh, your, okay. local, your, lo- your local designers, your local creations. So it's like a one-stop shop. Okay, but um, different designers. So they're not all from the same company. They're all kind of individuals and that's right. Uh, different, um, yeah, Different yeah, they're different people. brands and, you know, you, we'll find in Vietnam that the concept stores are really supporting their local artisans, local designers um, and giving them sort of a showcase. So, and would you say, just just sorry to interrupt, just to, to talk about sustainability and that kind of curve in terms of fashion and homewares, um, you know, how how is Vietnam staying ahead of that curve in the sustain? Is it coming through in that? Uh, concept store kind of thing or you know I don't know tell us a bit more about that sustainability side of Vietnam in in depth and I know we went to some places where uh, do you remember that handbag I bought that I think it was made out of was it bottle tops Uh, yeah um that's right you've got bottle tops you've got and it was just the most fabulous bag which I get lots of comments yeah yeah, and it was all handmade and hand stitched together. Yep. And when I wear it, you know, people people go, "Oh, that's such a fabulous bag." And then they look really closely, and then they see that it's made of bottle tops, and they yeah. just freak out. So yeah, interesting materials, recycled materials, repurposed materials, um, and you're going to find that all over. You've got things like washable paper bags. A quick plug for my own <laughs> store where I've, I've, I've got a big collection of washable paper bags. Um, yeah, I think because Vietnam sheer sort of biodiversity puts her in a unique position to easily kind of source these eco-friendly materials and they're really being used you know throughout like there's there's an emphasis on slow fashion and ethical production which I've mentioned so think about something like bamboo I mean one amazing resource the you know Vietnam they use it for clothing and furniture and then homewares and and you know my favorite spun bamboo bowls and trays and then you've got beautiful organic cottons and um, natural resources like uh, the mulberry silks. So one, um, there's a little store that you'll find a few branches of in Hoi An called Metaseco. Their, their clothes is, you know, this divine mulberry silk collections that they use. So it's, again, that natural emphasis on um, sustainable and ethical production. Um, water hyacinth is another thing, which, um, you know, you'll see an awful lot of ba- um, basket and rattan kind of bags across the country. Um, if they'd been made ethically, they would have been made from water hyacinth, which is like a prolific weed that grows through the waterways um, across the country, actually can choke some of the waterways. So that gets picked and dried using kind of traditional methods of hand weaving. Um, so, you know, when we were shopping in Saigon's District 2, um, if you, you're really looking out for a couple of stores that um, have emphasis on eco-friendly. Do you remember the shop green around the corner? That was one. Um, they, again, they showcase, that's a little concept store showcasing kind of washable paper bags and sort of flower pots, um, recycled jewellery and scarves. And then I know one of your favourites was that Ladai refill station um, where um, it, it's all kind of all kind of um, personal care products, like shampoos, conditioners, perfumes. And you can take your, if you're local, you can take your bottles along and have them refilled. Um, with your favourite mm. kind of liquids. Um, but actually I was um, doing some research. What they also do is they are now recycling bottles from a near, nearby restaurant. So the bottle and the restaurant gives them the bottles and then you can go and um, refill your bottles with whatever you want to buy and, and take it away. Yeah. So I just love how have, they think it all through. Yes. That's right. So resourceful. 
Um, mm. And I guess we can't mention recycling without kind of talking about uh, future traditions. So future traditions is um, a fashion and accessories um, brand in Hanoi. If you have time to go and visit their beautiful showroom, this amazing colonial kind of style building. And um, they have a collection called Treasures from the Shipwreck Coast, which mm. is literal jewellery that's been made from like broken bits of ceramics and glass that's um, been picked up. Washed, washed up. up on the yeah, washed up on the yeah. yeah, and they're made into I've got some pieces, yeah. Yeah, all one-offs. And that's the other thing, you know, when you're talking about handmade, unique items, it's, it's amazing to have your own one-off kind of creation that you can yes. take home with you. Mm. But it's, you know, like, would you agree, Judith, it's a bit of a head shift for people because, you know, moving from the the knockoffs and, you know, I can remember like 10, 12 years ago that the big thrill was to go to um, a store uh, that did knockoff CDs and then they you know, yeah. and then they'd put them in the sleeves. Oh. Do you remember they would fill the and then the only album. one out of ten worked when you got yes, home. and you had to get you know a certain kind of quality. So like you know moving along you know the path from from that you know kind of uh, initial uh, taste of Vietnam and shopping to what it is now is is quite a stretch. And I think if people do go to Vietnam and think, oh, yes, you know, sure, there are the bargains and there are the uh, the cheap knockoffs. Um, they are still there, very much so. But I think to to close your mind if you're going to Vietnam and just thinking that you would be doing Vietnam and yourself a disfavour because, you know, it's much wider as, as Judith is to, sort of talking about. And I think to look into some of the quality, you are going to have to pay for it. You know, it's it's definitely, it's not the cheap, cheap. It's not the copy, copy stuff. It's one-offs and, you know, it's handcrafted. And I think that's something to, to mention. And, you know, you might want to also talk about Chula as well as, you know, some sure. of her stuff. Well, yeah. What I was going to say is only in relation to you when you talk about, yes, it's not cheap. Um, but if you're, you're talking about taking home memories here, and so, you know, yes, if you take home a knockoff DVD, <laughs> we've all done yes. it in the past, or even a copy, um, what are those T-shirts that they love, the, the, um, the puffer jackets that, you, that people seem to go yes. to the market and get the copy. Mm-hmm. That's great. Well, I mean, if that's what your, your, your go-to thing is. Um, it's not going to remind you of Vietnam, though, is it? So um, I guess is what, what I want to kind of emphasise Um when I first went to Chula many, many years ago, um, I didn't have time. I was on one of those top-to-bottom tours and um, seeing a lot of the country in 16 days. I didn't have time for shopping. I didn't have the budget for shopping either. Um, but there was a couple of places that I managed to see and I couldn't get these places out of my mind. So I think if you go anywhere, <laughs> if, um, you know, when you go to Vietnam, you've got like an extra day at least in Hanoi perhaps, head to, we're going to get to Chula in a minute, but um Tan Me Design is somewhere I really do want to mention. It's like a shop, it's like a treasure trove. Um, like we talked about concept stores earlier. It's on three levels and it's got um, local design, homewares, jewellery, bags, fashion, all in the one place. They've even got a little cafe downstairs where if you get you know, tired from all the shopping, you go down, have a coffee, regenerate, go back up. Um, but, it, you know, um, there is so much of representation, representative of, of all the designers and everything that's going across the country in that one shop um and chula does um have a collection there quick mention of chula and um, when i first saw them years ago i couldn't get the elegance and the color out of my head and um, become a huge fan if you take home a piece of chula so chula is a, a, um, two spanish designers that made vietnam their home years ago they've got a beautiful electrical workshop where 75 percent of the workers are disabled um i've been lucky enough to go to that showroom everything's um you know uh, cut and sewn by hand and they call it wearable happiness I think we want to take this away actually um, yeah take that. home piece of wearable happiness treat yourself um, and then you'll let you have a piece of Vietnam home with you that will bring mm. up those wonderful memories and and you're right I mean sometimes you know and you know maybe I've got to be careful when I say this but you know in the in the male audience they don't kind of rate the shopping experience mm-hmm. so much but I think when <laughs> we think about this a little bit uh, wider and and as we're talking about wearable happiness memories of Vietnam shopping you know it, it is a way to invest back into the country to support 
um, locals and local mm-hmm. industries. Um, and as a developing country, I think for me personally, and I know you're the same, Judith, that's sort of something that we want to do because uh, we, because we love Vietnam so much. Mm-hmm. Um, and so to just talk about shopping as in like we're going to go to Myers or we're going to go to a, you know, a, a, a major shopping centre. Con- it's not like that, is it? It's, it's, not, like, it's just, not like that at all. No. It's just to me it's your entry into um, the culture of Vietnam. Yeah. I mean yeah. some of these stores are also fixed price that you're talking about. They are not uh, stores where you're going to be bargaining like you would um, in a street store or in a market. So they're, they're fixed price items. They are high quality, sometimes, you know, one-offs. And I know with Chula. And and then it's the experience of the actual store. I mean, that Chula store that uh, you talk about is just so beautifully laid out. It's like you walk into it and you go, oh, my God, I could almost sit down and have dinner here or a glass of wine or, mm. you know, or, you know in Chula's again. case, a, a sangria. <laughs> uh, and, um, yeah, isn't it? Like it's it's, it's, it's that like, explosion of colour that hits you. That's right. That it is. And I think also, you know, shopping isn't, I should, maybe I shouldn't have emphasised fashion so much because I think that the bulk, the vast majority of shopping in Vietnam to me is actually about the homewares, to be honest. And it's yes. the art, the lacquerware. For a travel lover, let's talk about art for a second. I think taking home a piece of art, um, is, there's nothing, how else are you going to, what other better way is there to remember a trip overseas if you've taken something from a local artist? And, uh, you know, you're going to find small galleries all over the country. Um, you can get to speak to the artists and meet interesting people, find out their stories. Judith, I think you are absolutely right. Taking home a piece of art or some photography of Vietnam, maybe featuring some of the places you've actually visited, maybe more in the line of some history or culture. Uh, I, I'm thinking about the minority groups and some of the photography work that's done uh, by a gentleman named Rahan. Uh, and he has been doing some fabulous work in photography of the minority groups around Vietnam for many, many years now. And he's put uh, his works together in a museum. Uh, it also features uh, the minority groups and their Uh, costumes, some of their jewellery and the stories that go with some of his photographs. It's really worth a visit. You'll you'll think you're going to pop in for about 10 minutes and you end up spending um, an hour or so there. It's really quite uh, an amazing place. I'd like to finish up uh, about shopping and uh, and before I say goodbye to Judith, just want to wrap up very quickly about uh, a tour Judith and I are actually co-hosting for 2021 called Shop, Eat, Love, Our Vietnam. Uh, We have put this together as a girls shopping and pampering tour. I mean, once the travel bans lift, we hope to lead this group uh, tour of awesome women. We only want awesome, fun women that we know will enjoy this kind of tour. Originally, we had it down for 2020, but you can see by COVID that's uh, that's been kicked to the curb, but we're very positive about 2021. It's the ideal Vietnam tour for solo women travellers who are maybe a little bit nervous about stepping out overseas, but would still like to have some fun shopping and getting some pampering with a group of fun women. The benefit of me working for a tour operator in Vietnam, I'm 100% confident this trip will be well managed and very safe for the traveller. Judith and I have also spent many hours researching and developing the tour to make sure everything has been thought through to the finest detail. Please see the link to the tour in my episode notes. Judith, just want to say a very big thank you again for being on the show. I'm sure the uh, listeners have got lots of tips now on where to shop and what to look out for in Vietnam. It certainly uh, has grown in my eyes since my early days of buying copy CDs and cheap knockoffs. I've really come a long way. Thank you for listening, everyone. Please subscribe, rate and review this episode as I love to get feedback as it helps me learn so much more about what you're looking for in these shows. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Check out the episode notes for more information. What about Vietnam? Don't forget to subscribe, rate and review and stay tuned for more fun adventures in Vietnam.
what about Vietnam? 